Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel, Life, Home, and My Linux Journeys. And in this journey, I'm going to, well, let me start at the beginning. And this, this journey for me began, oh, probably two months ago. About two months ago, I started getting some, at the point where I was proselyting Linux a little bit and asking people about their computer systems and what have you. And I was really surprised, actually, about 70, probably, I'm going to say 75%, three quarters of the people actually said they had a computer. Now, whether they use that computer, the percentage is going to go down. One guy said his was in, the, his was in his closet and he had been thinking about getting it out. So I'm hoping this may inspire him as well as some other people I've talked to on how to, what is Linux and how to install Linux. So the quickest and probably most easiest way to describe Linux or define Linux is to say that it is a alternative operating system that has nothing, to, it's an alternative operating system from Windows or Mac. It has its own uh, systems. And I said that plural because there are many Linux systems and other systems, Unix-like systems, available to just the end user. So, in other words, I think I was beginning to think that back in my day, when, when I first started trying to figure out Linux, some of the videos I watched helped tremendously, but some, <laughs> probably at the time more than half, really were didn't offer a lot as far as trying to understand what an ISO is or what an image file is, both being the same thing. So let's get started here. I'm going to slip over to my desktop after I put my glasses on. And bring up my notes here. So the first thing you're going to have to consider is which distribution are you going to use? Now, distribution is also referred to as distro and Linux. Linux operating systems are considered distributions or distros. Let's just open up a web page here. And as you can see by my tabs, I got plenty open here. So the first one is the Wikipedia. And this is a extensive list of all the different Linux operating systems that are available to anybody wanting to download, install, and perhaps learn about the systems. But you can see the list. Let me just grab the scroll bar. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on and on. It even tells you about some of the uh, outdated or not, not, uh, not available anymore distributions. Here's another website uh, from Stackscale listing what it says, 31 popular Linux distributions. So as you can see, there's, there's a lot of considerations that can be available and you can just get swamped in information and never make a move toward Linux. Uh, here you can see all of these are listed. Here's another comprehensive list of, this one says of all the Linux OS distributions. I'm not sure I didn't read all of them. I, I didn't read all the page, but I bet there's something in here that's not enlisted. The page is too little for it not to be. Oh, uh, another page listing the major distributions. The first one that distrowatch.com list is Linux Mint. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of reading here because I think that you need to do some reading, but we're going to take some of the research that you're going to do, we'll go ahead and get into Linux, get it installed for you. And at that point, you can start investigating uh, these different distributions. DistroWatch also offers a place here. You'll see on the left, this is their latest distributions that have come out with new ISOs. Makulu Linux, Smart OS, KDE Not Neon, etc. But on the right side of the page, you'll see a listing that goes by the hit counts, how many hits they get a day, and it lists 100 here. Although the last one there says plop, if I'm not mistaken, that is not a OS, it's a system that allow older computers to boot to a USB. So, Linux Mint is number two on DistroWatch's page, 
But I'm not going to start there because they're ranked number two. I don't care what they're ranked. I'm going to go there because I think, personally, I believe that this was probably one of the easiest ways to get familiar and introduced to Linux. No matter what I think of it itself or no matter what you'll eventually think about it, this will be a great place to start. And this is LinuxMint.com. Now, get your download here. You're going to be... <laughs> go back to my notes. There's so much distributions. There's so many different ways of installing Linux. It's not, I don't know, most people probably haven't installed Windows, but it is much more detailed than the Windows installer is. You get more options that are available to you, put it that way. And I'll make sure all these links do get in the show notes below so you can do your own reading. So I started off on Linux Mint in this introduction here. We're going to start with Linux Mint, and this is their homepage. Now, actually, I prefer Linux Mint Debian Edition, which is here. And I, when I install that, I do the XFCE desktop with it, which you have to add. It's not, they don't, it doesn't come with that. So if you're going to get your download, let's just click right here, and you'll see installation instructions. Here you'll see they come with Cinnamon Edition, the Mate Edition, XFCE Edition, which is what I got. So let's click on Download. And you'll see you got different ways of downloading it here with the torrent or with their mirrors. But you'll eventually, this may not be so quite important to you to, in the beginning, but eventually you'll want to know how to test your ISO and make sure it is a true ISO. Here it says anyone can produce fake ISO images, which is true. Uh, all the distributions allow you to make your own distribution. <laughs> it is your responsibility to check you are downloading the official ones. So you don't you don't just left click on that and save it. You're going to right click on it and say uh, save link as. And when you do that, it should open up your file manager and ask you where do you want to save it. And in this case, I put it right in my downloads folder. Here it is there. The Shade 256 sum as well as the GPG key. All right, so you've downloaded that. You're going to verify it. Here's the link to tell you how to verify it. Uh, right here is verify. You need to download both of those by right-clicking on them, save them as them. <laughs> save them as, uh, link as. And let's just run this one. Let me open up a terminal. Let me open up Thunar. Let's open up Downloads. And right click and say Open Terminal here. Get this where I can see both. So this would be, you can see here I'm in my Downloads folder. So that would be SHA-256. I wonder if tab complete. Nope, because I didn't type 256 sum. And then hyphen B, and then whatever your ISO file is. So in this case, it's Linux Mint, Linux Mint XFCE. So let's type in Linux and hit tab, Mint XFCE. Now, when we hit enter right here, it's going to look at the ISO, and it's going to give us a result right here. All right, so now if we open up the two sh the Shea 256 sum in a text editor, let's open that up. Let's say open it up with a text editor. <laughs> and let's compare the readout that we got here. The last four numbers here is 6527. 6527CB1. That's it right there. So that's approved. You got a good ISO so far. Next thing is you're going to want to import this GPG key. Import the Linux Mint GPG kit. I've already done this. If it complains here, it tells you what to do. If it complains, it did not complain for me. Now, if we go and open that terminal back up, and we go GPG base key, nope, <laughs> hyphen, hyphen. Verify, verify, SHA-256, T-256, 
text dot gpg space sha 256 tab all right so here we hit enter and here is the good signature from linux mint signing so all of your tests to do this uh to check your iso make sure everything is legitimate is there now all the distributions that i know of offer similar service it may not be the same pattern but the service end result will be the same all right so the next thing you want going to want to know how to do is create a bootable usb with that iso what are you going to do with that iso so let me open up here download and here's the iso that we would be interested in burning so how do you do that linux mint offers by default a usb imager and a usb formatter if you had a usb you wanted to clear everything out on it there you go uh, if you wanted to write the disk that's what we would do we would open that up we'd select our image file which is in downloads linux mint xfce we're going to say open now i don't have a usb stick plugged into here but if i did i would hit the arrow here and i would select it and then i'd say write it so close out out. It also gives you instructions here. Really, it kind of dodges. It says if you're using Windows, Mac OS, or some other Linux distributions, you can download and install Etcher, a graphical ISO burner. And there's other ones, Rufus, if, if you're in uh, Windows, XF burn. Okay, so. I'm gonna just end on the desk, uh, end on the burning the ISO right here. And this is a website called Tech Radar, and it lists the best Linux desktops of 2024. Now, this is a major thing as far as a setting Windows aside from a Linux distribution. In Linux, or let me back up, in Windows, when you turn your Windows machine on, you're gonna see the same screen every time no matter if it's a fresh install or install you did three years ago. You just don't have options like you do in Linux. And I'll make sure this link gets in the description because you will have to make this decision eventually. And it goes through the desktops in alphabetical order, Budgie, Deepin, Enlightenment, LXQT, etc. I mean, you can see it's a pretty extensive list and i'm sure it's not all of them so let me minimize this so now you got your iso you verified it you have downloaded it and you're ready to put it on a usb stick my recommendation is a usb stick with a minimum size of eight gigabytes or larger once you download that you're going to need to boot up to it so in order to boot up to it you may have to hit a different key Let's see. On a Lenovo, which I'm on right now, for the boot menu, I hit F12. If I want to get into the BIOS, it's F1. HP, it's the escape, escape key, and then you'll shoot, make your selection from that menu. Dell, F2 for BIOS, F, BIOS, F12 for boot menu, and you're ready to install the ISO. Now, I do have it set up right here in VirtualBox. If I can find VirtualBox. Oh, why did it go there? Here it is. I do have it set up right here in VirtualBox. And this is Linux Mint, the XFCE version we just downloaded. This is the Cinnamon version. So this will be what the XFCE looks like. So let's install the Cinnamon. So I'm going to click on Start here. Tell it to start. And once this gets loaded up, I'm going to share with you one of the beautiful things about having a live image ISO. And we're booting in UEFI mode. My mouse. There we go. Even had audio right off the bat. Uh, if, when you boot into your system, no, you're going to have to, more than, unless you're connected to a wired Ethernet, you'll have to set up your Wi Fi by entering your password. If it, detects your Wi-Fi. So let me adjust this display here. Let's see what our option here. There's one. Say apply. 
gonna keep the new changes. So what I did was I adjusted the desktop size here, but if you was booting this into a machine, th this center screen or middle screen would be the only thing you would see. You wouldn't see all of my stuff. So the installer is on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and double click that. Oh, before I, let me just minimize this when it starts. Okay, there it is. One of the beautiful things about having a live image ISO of Linux or any Linux distribution that has a live ISO is you can see that Firefox is on the desktop. And if you click on it, it's going to open up Firefox. Now you'll be free to browse, do whatever information or whatever data exchange you want to do and close it out. And when you power this ISO off, without installing it that is gone and i've seen several very renowned youtubers say that that's what they've done and i've I seen this like three and four years ago so that's a common practice so let me open up the installer it says this is linux mint debian edition six uh, this is going to be the cinnamon desktop I wanted to do the XFCE, but let's go. So your first option is what language we would you like? By default, it's selected English, United States. Correct. Pick my time zone. Can't click it like I didn't. Just find it on the right here. Say next, because I'm in the time zone of Chicago, central US keyboard. You could type in a text. Okay, so now we're going to enter our name. And I give it a password. And I'm going to say require a password to log in. Now, so here's another decision that you'll want to make. And you'll probably want to make it before you make the install. Is do you want to turn your machine on and it just automatically come on? Most older Windows machines, the ones I saw, that's the way they were set up. So, but I'm not going to do that so we can see this. Now, you do have a chance here to encrypt your home folder. And when I click next, it'll ask me for a complicated password, which will encrypt my home folder. All right, so next. Now, here's another uh, thing that's different in Windows. Here, if I just clicked automatically, select the disk first, and click next, it's going to do just like Windows would do. It's going to pre-partition your disk and set up the operating system with no intervention, intervention from me. But I'm going to do a manual partitioning. So if I click manual partition and I go next, this is what it's wanting to do. It's wanting to give me a 299 or just call it a 300 megabyte EFI system partition. I had no problem with that. It's wanting to give me a six and a half gigabyte of swap partition. Now in Windows, they have a page file. In Linux, we have a swap file or ZRAM even don't we're not going to talk about that though and what it did here i gave it i allocated if i bring up virtual box you'll see here i allocated six gigabytes of ram so it gave me six and a half gigabytes of swap space it basically that's gigabytes it basically matched the ram now if you have a low ram system less than four gigabytes of ram you're going to want to give yourself a little more than that eight gigabytes to swap minimum so we're going to say launch g parted because you may want to do this otherwise you can click next and you're done so let's just give it a new partition table we're going to give it a gpt say okay and that'll wipe out our partition now we're going to say new let's give this 512 megabytes file system will be fat 32 and we won't label it you could all right there's that now i'm gonna say new and here i'm gonna give it uh, eight gigabytes of swap space here where it says file system select linux swap say add now the rest of this i'm just going to dedicate to whatever's left to what what a c drive so now I could bust that up, but I'm not going to. You could have a C drive and a D drive or a data drive, which in Linux is called a home folder. So if you wanted to partition your disk this way, 
you're fine. If you wanted to add a partition for your data, you could do it right here. So I'm going to click on the check mark to apply the detail application. We'll say close. Make sure this is uh, manage the flags. And we're going to make that a boot flag. ESP boot flag. Say so, yep. It's got a flag of swap there. Let's make sure this one says root. Uh, doesn't need to. Okay. So we're good to go. Nothing else to do. Let's close that out and say refresh. Now we should see, once I click refresh, eight gigabytes of swap and the rest of it on the drive. So let's say next, a root partition. Uh oh, it didn't. There we go, man. Assign to root. That's what I tried to do when it said manage the flags, but apparently, well, wow. Uh, Wipe the flag out. Put EFI swap. Let's go next. Install Grub on SDA. In this case, the hard drive is SDA, not a partition, but the hard drive SDA. And we're going to say next. Here's a summary of everything it's going to do. If you don't like this, you can say back. Okay, we're going to say install. And it's copying the files. It's already partitioned the disk. Now it's copying some files over. So while that's actually installing, let's let's uh, take a look at their menu. This is going to be the Cinnamon Desktop. Wonder if there's an about. Nope. Wonder if there's an info. Yep. System info. Uh, I'm not sure. There we go. Then expand DE, which stands for Debian Edition Six Bay, which is a very recent six kernel 13 gen kernel five hard drive upload system information if you wanted to upload this to linux mint organization and help them that would be the way to do it all right so all applications well these are your favorites first of all so here files browser in your favorite terminal is in your favorites don't get hung up on a terminal as a new user yet. And don't get hung up on it ever. <laughs> System settings or control center. Uh, software manager for uh, installing software. Searching and looking for available software. And Firefox. Firefox is in your favorites and on your desktop. As well as the file browser and the terminal. If we open up a terminal. And you probably might want to do it i don't know but if i just type in lsblk which stands for list block devices you'll see our hard drive sda is efi partition eight gigabytes of swap and 51 gigabytes target which is the main drive root folder home folder all that all right so under graphics or accessories here we're going to get gnome disk which is a great tool for Writing ISOs to USBs like we just did. Tells you information about your hard drive. Now, it, this is a virtual box, so, you know, it's probably not going to be exactly the same. In fact, it doesn't show you smart data and tests. But after I get installed on real hardware, it will. So that's a really handy piece of software. That, that applies for a USB. If you plug in a USB uh, drive, it should show it up on disk there. And you can repair your disk. We're almost through copying. USB imager and stick formatter, the formatter, which I just showed you. Uh, warm, warpinator, send and receive files across the network for connecting uh, to other people on your network. In the graphics, we're going to get a scanner, a drawing application and pics for looking at pictures internet we get firefox web browser hex chat thunderbird transmission a torrent file handler and web apps which is a pretty cool thing you can set up a, a web page just like an application to only go into one website that's it's actually fairly nice gives us the full suite of libre office comparative to microsoft word i guess uh, sound and video, we're going to get a, a audio player, video player, hypnotics, 
watches TV. I have never used that. Uh, one time I looked at it and I wasn't impressed and closed out and never went back. Install Multimedia Codex. Now, when you get through installing, you're going to want to find this in your menu again and click on it and it'll search for any codex that you might need to allow you to play videos or watch some some movies rhythm box administration we got gparted which we just used disk usage analyzer software manager software sources looks like we're fixing to get through here checking the bootloader gnome system monitor which is sort of similar to a certain view of task manager all right we want to restart we're going to say no we're going to power off and it should actually just remove the iso for me it's right there yep it's telling me to remove it and it just did it press enter now if we start back up there's our boot menu and it won't remember our display size. We'll have to readjust. But if all else goes, there's our login screen. This is called a login screen. Type in your name or select a name if it's not listed. So if we have any options here, we do have options for software rendering and default X session. But we're going to leave it right there at cinnamon default. Press enter. We even have sound. One of the things about Linux Mint, they have a welcome screen and it allows you to get familiar with your system before you ever really get started with it. So let's change this resolution back to right there. Say OK. Keep it. Close that out. And you'll see if under first steps, once you get through here, by the way, you can untick this and you won't see it again, although it's available in the menu. Your desktop color snapshots install those multimedia codecs i was just talking about update manager to make sure your system's up to date you'll see right here there's a red dot on that one there's also a red dot on mine and it tells me there's updates available this one says welcome to the update manager which that will have to be updated first i'm sure even comes with a firewall so in in windows they have a firewall built in but there are other third party firewalls available gives you some documentation some help if you need help and it gives you also a way to contribute let's look at the menu because it's that didn't change we got firefox software manager settings terminal and files in the favorites i was in preferences here we got backgrounds we can change our backgrounds so you're, you're pretty much installed. Now, the first thing I would do is I would leave that window manager open. In fact, let's find it. Type in welcome, hit enter, and go here. First steps, desktop color. System snapshots is a way to back up your system. Personally, I would update, run the updates and media codecs first. But let's go ahead and run this update manager, and it's going to Tell me it needs it, what all it does. This tool provides your operating system with software and security updates. Click OK when you've read all that. And the first thing it's going to say, do I want to switch to local mirrors? And I'm going to say no for now and tell it to refresh because there should be at least one update. Maybe it might be totally up to date. It might have brought it in while it was installing. But that wouldn't be my experience. While that's checking, let's bring up a men menu and just type in print. You got print settings, screenshot. Okay, so a, a new update or an update manager, a new uh, update manager is available. I'm going to say apply the update. It's going to require a password. And you'll find that in Windows, when you open up or, or try to install a software, you'll get an administrator window that says, allow this to run well this is kind of what linux does it gives you a password to install if you don't know the password you can't just go up and then start installing people's software on other people's machines which is if you think about it that's awesome there's a lot of updates here i'm not going to continue on with this 
I'll, I will do the updates, but I'm going to do it after the video is over here. Let me go back to my main screen here. And really, this should be good enough to get you started, at least get the system installed. Now, I didn't touch on installing a virtual box because you don't really have to have a virtual box to test a live system like we just did. I installed the live system, but you saw that I was able to go into the, the property or software that menu that was available and use, for instance, Firefox. So in essence, you could take that disk, USB, ISO that you just burned, boot up to another machine that is capable of booting up and use it and then say you pay bills, close it out. And then there's no uh, shut down the machine, and then there's no trace of it on that machine. It's all if there's any trace, it would be on your USB key. So that's a great advantage to having a, a live image to work with and being familiar a little bit with Linux. So I hope this helps. And if you choose to uh, run Linux, I wish you luck on your journey. So may your journey be without incident. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back on part two here, what to do after you've installed the system. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on another video. Peace out, bye. <laughs>